Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. Uh, as state treasurer, much of my job involves dealing with numbers and other abstractions. But one of my duties is very concrete, and that is acting as the custodian for state-owned properties and buildings that have been declared surplus. This is the bricks and mortar part of my job, and let me assure you, it doesn't get more bricks and mortar than Greystone Park, especially the massive Kirkbride building. After seeing the Greystone Park site in person for the first time last year, it was clear to me that we must finish the job of turning the site into one that can be used and enjoyed by the public. Under Governor Chris Christie's plan, we will be able to meet that obligation at Greystone in a manner that is both fiscally responsible and that continues the administration's progress in expanding open space resources for New Jerseyans. When I visited Greystone, I was impressed by the vision that supported the design and construction of the complex more than a hundred years ago. But I was also deeply disturbed by the complex's current condition. The complex's deterioration stood as a glaring example of the consequences of failed leadership and governmental neglect. And it was offensive to the notion that we in government have an obligation as stewards of the public trust. Under this governor, no more. Thank you, Governor, for both expecting and empowering us to step up to our obligations of stewardship, including the very significant challenge of repurposing this property. It's taken a lot of expertise, vision, and hard work, and I want to very briefly acknowledge the hard work um, of key Treasury personnel, including uh, Deputy Treasurer Rob Romano and Chief of Staff Regina Egea, who are here today, as well as Assistant Treasurer Steve Petreca, Steve Sutkin, and Ray Arcario, who's here of our Division of Property Management and Construction, who are the in-house experts at Treasury. Treasury's Division of Property Management and Construction will lead in implementing the Governor's plan and managing Greystone's transition over the next few years. And we will be working closely with the Department of Environmental Protection to make sure that all the remediation work that is needed on the property is done correctly and efficiently and that we return this land to the public in at least as good a condition as it was when the state first began acquiring it back in 1871. Thank you so much for coming out this morning and I want to turn it over to Commissioner Martin at this time. Thank you. Good morning. It's wonderful being here in Morris County. This has been a remarkable week uh, for the state of New Jersey environmentally. On Monday, uh, EPA granted our 126 petition to protect the air from a power plant that's right across the river that, that spews lots of socks and knocks right across the river uh, to, to uh, Warren County and including into Morris County overall. Uh, it's going to force that power plant to cut its emissions dramatically over, over the next couple of years um, or close. Uh, on Monday as well, in addition, we also had uh, the first start of the first phase of the cleanup of the dioxins in the Passaic River. Well, there's a long ways to go on that. It was the first start, official start, of dredging that river and cleaning up the dioxins. Yesterday, the governor announced a sustainable funding program for parks across the state. So long term, we can keep all the parks open and keep them maintained and increase the availability of parks to all the people of the state of New Jersey, which has over 19 million visitors on an annual basis. Today, we're focused on, on a whole new cleaning up of a major site in the state of New Jersey, which is, uh, which is extremely important to the governor. The governor, this project encompasses two major focuses of this administration and this governor. It focuses on cleaning up contaminated sites in the state of New Jersey. It also focuses on the governor's commitment to open space to make sure that continues in the future. There are over 16,000 contaminated sites in the state of New Jersey. This is one of those contaminated sites. It's extremely imp important that we focus on cleaning up that site. This pro the program right now that the state has, the Licensed Site Professional Remediation Program, is a program that will focus on cleaning up that program on a very timely basis and very quick basis. We plan to use that program. The governor's committed to that program. DEP is committed to the success of that program long term. 
The other part of it, as I mentioned, is open space. This program, this program, open space program from the state's been going on for 50 years. We are celebrating our 50th anniversary of the Green Acres program in the state of New Jersey. This is part of that program long term, and this will be turned over to Parkland for the future, for the use of Morris County and for the residents of the state of New Jersey. The commitment from DEP uh, for this site will be to make sure that the, we, the standards of cleaning up this site are held to the high standards we have for all cleaning up all other sites in the state of New Jersey under the LSRP program. Our commitment will also be to assist in any way, shape, or form in transferring this site over to the county long term for parkland and the use of this land for open space overall. In addition, we'll commit to doing whatever we need to do to get any permitting sorted out from the DEP side to make this project move very quickly and get done on a timely basis. With that, I want to introduce the Governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Please, please. Thanks. Happy to be here. Happy to be home. Good place to start my day. Um, certainly better than Trenton. Um, <laughs> I want to thank, uh, first off, uh, Commissioner Martin and, and the State Treasurer, uh, Andrew Aristoff. Um, and their staffs. They, they've done a tremendous job on this and I know Rob is here and Regina and, and uh, Larry Ragnes from the DEP. Uh, the folks have worked extraordinarily hard on this to make it happen. I want to thank uh, those members of my administration. I want to welcome all the different officials here. Um, local officials like Mayor Barbario and Mayor Trutzer. Good to see you. Um, county officials, I see Freeholder Murphy here, and um, this has been, uh, the, the Greystone project has been something that has been a special project of Freeholder Murphy's, uh, almost his entire tenure on the Freeholder Board, and um, uh, we're glad to be able to give you more to do, John, um, and thank you for your for your leadership uh, on this issue. I see Freeholder File here and Freeholder Nordstrom as well. Thank them for being here, and from the state legislature, the Senator Bucco and Senator Panacci are both here. I appreciate their support and work on this project along with Assemblyman Bucco and Assemblyman Carroll um, and of course the Minority Leader in the Assembly, uh, Alex DeCroach. So thank you all for being here, appreciate it. You know, uh, our view on this is that this facility um, has been unfortunately um, an eyesore um, in this area, the way it's been maintained and treated over time by the state, candidly neglected um, by the state. And so I went to our folks having a you know, unique knowledge of the situation here in this county, in my home county, went to the treasurer and the DP commissioner and said we need to do something about it and we should work with the county to do it. And uh, they reached out to John Panani, the county administrator, and we began to have conversations about how this could be done. Um, we'll see the demolition under this plan of a rundown, dilapidated existing buildings, the environmental remediation of the site and finally the site's conversion to public open space that will be operated by the Morris County Park System, which is the best park system, uh, county park system in the state of New Jersey. Uh, current estimates project the total cost of implementing this plan to be around $27 million, which will be met in partnership with local governments and financed through a combination of bonds available through the EDA, including redevelopment bonds and open space funding, which we have available to us as well. Upon approval, the first step of moving forward with the plan will be the issuance of an RFP for an environmental and design consultant to perform an assessment, make sure we do this the right way, implement this plan without delay, but also uh, in a way that will do honor to the people of this county. We're also concerned about the historic nature of the property. An historic feasibility study will be conduct conducted to determine whether any of the existing facilities and infrastructure, particularly the main Kirkbride building, have any economically self-sustaining uses. Uh, these findings will be incorporated in the final implementation plan for Greystone, whatever they are. And finally, by taking action to clean up the uh, environmental problems in this site uh, and turn it into a public asset, we're fulfilling our obligation, as the Treasurer said, uh, to return this land to the people uh, who, originally, who we originally took it from in a condition that is at least as good as we found it back then. Uh, just as the state's done with brownfields and other contaminated sites and unused state property in the past, this plan furthers our goal of taking unused or contaminated land and turning it into some usable public good. Uh, we're expanding the amount of open space available to our citizens by doing this, and that's a good thing. And we're furthering our land preservation efforts as well, uh, which in the most densely populated state in America is never a bad thing either. Uh, 
I want to thank these folks for doing what they're doing. I want to thank the county and the members of the state legislature who have been extraordinarily supportive of this, and of course the local officials who have a huge stake in the way this will be cleaned up and then ultimately developed. Um, this is truly going to be a partnership in terms of what's done, how it's done, and make sure that the people of Parsippany, the people of Mars Plains, um, also have a voice heard in this process and make sure that their leaders have a seat at the table. I can't imagine how I'd keep Frank or Jamie away from the table anyway. Um, but, you know, invite them first rather than have them storm the place um, and insist on being there. So um, I've had a lot of experience with both of them. So um, I appreciate all of you being here this morning and your support of this. Um, this is important things for us to be doing. You know, all too often over the last 22 months, um, I've had to come behind podiums like this and microphones and talk about... Um, things that we're cutting, things that we're eliminating, necessary steps to try to get our government under control. And I didn't shy away from that, and I'll continue not to shy away from it, as we need to continue to do it in the future to restore our state to fiscal stability. But um, as I remind people all the time, uh, people talk about the billions and billions of dollars that we've cut, and we have, and we're proud of it. Um, but we also still spend $29 billion a year. Um, and we need to also be reminding the people of the state of New Jersey the good things that we use the tax money they send for. Uh, we're going to continue to try to get rid of the bad ways that we spend it, and there's still more to be done on that score. But we also have to do some very good things for the preservation of our state, for the quality of life of our people. We need to talk about that as well. So thank you all for being here.